Hi everyone, today I'm going to focus on Wang Goss brushes and comparing them to other brushes. I've done a post on this on the Fude subreddit comparing Wang Goss brushes to Hakuhodos. So if you're interested, the link will be in the description box below. The dyed ones are no longer being sold, but I have heard that the new undyed ones are not that much softer than the original series, which is why I'm making this video. I originally wasn't going to make one, but with his new face being released and everything, I thought, why not? I am not affiliated with either brand and just want to share my honest opinions about them. Some of you who watch this may be diehard Wayne Goss fans and may not like some of the things I say about liking Hakuhodo brushes more, but please keep in mind that I'm not talking about him, him as a person, I'm talking about the brushes. I'm not attacking him or trying to damage his reputation. If there is a chance he ever watches this or reads my subreddit post, I hope he'll take it as constructive criticism and as a Fude lover's feedback and work with his brush OEM to improve his brushes. So these are the softest tea dyed brushes I've come across to date. And it's pity, it's a pity that they're discontinued. Um, the tea dyed ones I'm talking about are like the brown ones. And it's speculated that Hakuhodo is the original equipment manufacturer for Wang Goss. And through extensive research, I can almost completely confirm that they produce his brushes. The, the facilities look identical and the brush hair quality, shapes, and craftsmanship are nearly identical with the Wang Goss ones being less well made sometimes. I've compared the squirrel and goat hairs between Hakuhodo, Chikuhodo, and Koyudo to know which company excels in which hair type. The Hakuhodo undyed equivalents are softer than the tea dyed Wayne Goss brushes. And I mean, it's pretty obvious, like even his new face set would be softer than his tea dyed hairs. It's just, um, that's just the way it is. Like once you put, once you dye hair, it's not as soft as, you know, the virgin hair. Hakuhodo ones are better for sensitive and mature skin in the colder, one, colder months because the Wang Goss ones will feel prickly during that time. So I'm, I'm, con so I'm comparing the undyed Hakuhodo Saikoho to dyed um, Wang Goss brushes. And you can also compare the new face brush with his dyed ones. So I, I personally prefer the Hakuhodo versions since I have sensitive skin and the, over, the overall quality and craftsmanship seems to be better in the Hakuhodo ones. Wayne Goss brushes seem to have more inconsistent quality issues is what I found. So I'm gonna start off with Wayne Goss 2 and then just go down the line all the way until 19 because that's, um, I don't have every single brush, but I have some. So Wayne Goss 2 is a candlestick brush made out of blue scroll hair. This one right here. Think of something like a supersized version of the three. The hairs are not as soft as gray squirrel and feel like a combination of goat and squirrel hairs to me. I know some people say that blue and gray squirrel hairs are the same, but they seem different to me based on the hair colors and softness. So let me show you how this works. When compared to his airbrush, the Wayne Goss 2 is less soft and they're both made out of blue squirrel hair. So it's very, it's very interesting how a lot of his brushes are made out of blue squirrel hair, but sometimes, um, you know, like the two and the three are black, but the four is brown and stuff like that. Um, so this is a multifunctional brush that can be used for powder, highlight, contour, uh, I meant to say powder highlight, not, not powder and highlight. So powder highlight, contour, and powdering smaller areas of the face as the taper allows it to get into those areas. Flexibility-wise, it's got a little resistance since it's a scroll brush and application-wise is not one of my favorites for powder highlight. I tried this with the Anastasia Beverly Hills Illuminator or actually no, one of the highlight shades from one of her glow kits and it left a streak on the top of my cheekbones. I had to go in with a stippling brush to buff it out afterwards. Okay, and then we have the Hakuhodo B5521. This is the dyed discontinued brush version and 
as all brushes are handmade and not one brush is identical, the B5521 has a shorter taper than the Wayne Goss 2 and is fatter and has a little has a little bit more resistance. So I'm just going to compare them to here. You can see the 2 has a higher taper, a longer hairs. They're both about um, the same softness and since I like pigmented highlight, both brushes don't cut it for me in terms of highlight application, although this one blended better, blended my highlight better than the Wayne Goss 2. My favorite highlighting brush is the Hakuhodo J5521, the GOAT version of this exact brush. Perhaps I'll make a highlighting brush video soon. And uh, I already have a blog post on it though, so if you guys want to see a video on highlighting brushes, just let me know, know in the comments. Okay, so next up is the Wayne Goss 3. This is one of my favorite Wayne Goss brushes and where his brush is actually better than Hakuhodo's for once. It's got a round body with a tapered tip, so it would make a lovely blending brush for those of you with large eyes, but also medium sized eyes would do well with this as well. My eyes are not that big and um, I like it for all over blending. The hairs are made out of blue squirrel, but again, are not as soft as other gray squirrel hairs I felt. My guess would be that it's a mix of goat and squirrel. Perhaps the coarseness in this type of hair allows it to blend eyeshadow a little bit better. The Hakuhodo version is the G5522, which I've only tried the original dyed version of, and it's now discontinued. I don't have that one anymore. I didn't like that one at all because it was scratchy, but I felt, but I have felt the new undyed version in store and it was a lot softer and made out of a mix of goat and blue squirrel instead of just squirrel as the original was. So this is actually the goat version of the Wayne Goss 3. This is the Hakuhodo J5522. Mine is like really tapered and more narrow than the three. <clears throat> okay. And then the Wayne Goss 4 is another lovely blending brush that I like from the line. Uh, but I actually prefer the Hakuhodo version more. It's labeled as a crease brush, but I prefer it for soft focus blending for my hooded eyes. You can see this. The 4 is also made out of blue scroll, but it's clearly a different color from the 3. The 4 is dark brown, while the, four, while the 3 and 2 are black. So. The four is also softer. Let's see um, if you can see in this lighting. Yeah, so the three is on the left and the four is on the right. They're different colors. And I forgot to show you how this one works. Okay, and then the Hakuhodo S142BK is from the Black S series, which has 24 karat gold plated brass ferrules. I love this brush a lot. The Wayne Goss 3 and S, well actually the Wayne Goss 4, my bad, and the S142 are the same price. Usually there's a slight difference in price where the Wayne Goss brushes will cost a few dollars less than the Hakuhodo equivalents in the US. In Japan, however, Hakuhodo is cheaper. Anyway, the S142 is one of my favorite blending brushes when I don't need intense blending, which is what I reserve my J142 for. The S142 Blends better than the Wayne Goss 4 to me, and the outer layers of the hairs aren't as crazy as the 4. Okay, so let's see. They both have like pretty crazy hairs sticking out, but I feel that the S142 keeps its shape better, if you can see here. Uh, and um, I'm sick right now, so my voice is kind of crazy. All right, so next up we have the Wayne Goss 5, which is the new version. <clears throat> I have the new version, new version. And um, it's a tiny precision detail brush you can use for lining the lash line and a variety of other peculiar uses, which I wouldn't personally use this brush to apply with. For instance, Beautylish, Web, the Beautylish website says you can use this to line your lips and apply small amounts of concealer. This brush is made out of blue squirrel hair. Squirrel hair shouldn't be used with cream and liquid products because the hair is delicate and prone to breaking easily through mishandling. 
Kumano Fude companies advise customers to avoid using squirrel brushes with liquid and cream products. Back to the five. I don't usually I don't usually um, use this because it's a little it's a little too small for my liking since I don't line my lower, my lower lash line, which is I know it's like sacrilegious, right? Um, I don't line my lower lash line. The the one I have isn't as soft as some of my other pencil brushes. It's very small when compared to other brushes like the MAC 219. The 20 is a larger version of this brush and more similar to the, the MAC 219, although the 20 has a longer taper and is less dense in the body. So, um, I mean, I wouldn't recommend this for people with super sensitive skin, but if you have normal to like oily and yeah, like non-sensitive skin, then it'd be, it would be good for low lining your lower lash line and next we have the Wayne Goss 6. I don't own this anymore but this was one of my first food I, I ever bought the other being the Takumi T7. I did I just spiced both of them because they just didn't apply or blend eyeshadow well and the 6 wasn't dense enough. It was also made out of blue scroll hair but it was dark brown just like the 4. So here's the Hakuhoda version, the, the G5523. I love this, this brush too. Um, it's dense enough for my liking and it's amazing how much more hair added into a brush head can affect performance. I use this for soft blending since it's made out of blue squirrel hair as well. And it's just, um, you know, you can blend like this and you can also blend like this, like vertically. So the next couple brushes, the ones, the all of the four over here, I have used in patting and sweeping motions. So I've tried both, also buffing. Um, so this is the Wingoss 11. And I'm really sad to say this, but this applied my powder cakily, if that's a word. It, my powder ended up looking cakey after I used this to set my face with. Uh, which was a first, first for me, like with food aid ever, because I I have tried so many brushes, so many Japanese brushes to apply powder with, and I've never ended up looking cakey. Um, so I'm really, yeah, I, I'm really disappointed <laughs> in this brush. Um, but who knows? Maybe I just picked up too much powder, or it was just a. Uh, the powder didn't sit well with my foundation. It could have been a lot of things, but I just wanted to throw that out there. The bristles became tacky after uh, setting my face, which typically doesn't happen with goat brushes, only squirrel. Um, so yeah, I was like, you know, I was way, I was surprised in more than one way. Um, the gradation of the hairs, when I say gradation, I'm speaking about the layers. So like, uh, it'll start, you know, start like here and it gets, it gradually becomes longer and longer. The gradation, looks abrupt. The transition from, from shorter to longer hairs is not that nice. And I'm just not a fan of this brush, I'm sorry. Uh, I, I don't know, like everyone loves this brush and I was expecting to love it too, but I'm just not a fan. And so here we have the Hakuhodo J110, which is one of my favorite brushes for blush ever. I think this is what the 11 was based off of because they look very similar. I know um, some people have fluffier J110s since they're all handmade. They're all they're all a little different. Um, mine just seems very uh, narrow and like more, just like less poofed out, as you can see on the side. Less poofed. Out. I also keep it in a brush guard, so that's that's another reason. But I know someone has a uh, one of my friends has hers. Her J110 actually really looks like the Wayne Goss 11. It poofs out. A lot <clears throat> and um, yeah so the the gradation of the hairs for the J110 start around the same area as the Wingoss 11 I think it's about here I never really noticed that before about my Hakoda brushes or my white my undyed ones because they're white and it's really difficult to see the gradation of the hairs but I uh, after inspecting it come when I was comparing it to Wayne Goss, I noticed that the gradation starts around the same area and the J, um, 
yeah, so the I like targeted blush, so I actually prefer the J110 because the Wayne Goss one is so much more like f fluffy. It's hard. It's harder to apply blush in a targeted area, along with the fact that it's wider. And <clears throat> yeah, I'm like losing my voice, but I really wanted to film this video, so let me just drink some water. <laughs> Okay, um, here is the Wayne Goss 12. This also didn't apply blush very well. It didn't pick up um, light to medium pigmented blushes that well either. And it doesn't have much movement in the head from how dense it is, but it has more flexibility than the Tom Ford Cheek. So it's very dense, but... Um, yeah, I know some people use this for contour. I wouldn't personally use this for contour because I prefer the shape of my Hakuhodo G504 over this. And the gradation is about the same as the Wingoss 11 in terms of where the hair starts near the furl. I've tried this with uh, my knockout palette from ColourPop's Nectar collection and didn't like the way it applied my blush. I don't know, I just like dipped it in a few times and then tried applying it like this you know, patting motions as well, sweeping and buffing, and it just it just didn't apply the way I liked it. Um, it's definitely not my kind of shape for blush, but I know a lot of people like this brush a lot. It's everything is, you know, based on personal preference, so you may really love this brush and it's just not for me. Um, if the shape interests you and you don't, you know, like you don't have it um, and a shape interests you, then please do try it out. Don't let me deter you from getting it. Although uh, I would, I would uh, personally wait for the face set, like the individual, the individual brushes to come out and test out, you know, one or two before diving head in, unless, unless you know you'll definitely like all of the brushes in his new face set, then you can get the entire set. Okay, so here is the Tom Ford Cheek. I thought it would be similar to the Wayne Goss 12 and J5, Hakuhodo J5543, which I've only seen in store, but it's, all, it's, but it's almost completely different, honestly. Um, like, so if you see, like, look at this, the shapes are very different. The Tom Ford cheek is extremely dense, so not everyone would like it or find it useful or a brush they'd use every day. Um, here's the top of the head. It's made out of exquisitely soft psycho hole. I would give this brush a 9 out of 10 on my softness scale. It's super soft. It can be used with lightly pigmented blushes and bronzers. It's soft enough for sensitive skin in the cold months. The hair gradation is difficult to see since the hairs are white, but there is a gradation from shorter to help to longer hairs, which doesn't affect its performance. And the gradation seems to be more seamless than the Wayne Goss brushes. I used this on one side of my face and the Wayne Goss 12 on the other with the Milani Rose Blush in Coral Cove. If you're not familiar with the Milani Rose powder brushes, they are hard pressed into the pans and a lot stiffer than soft pressed blushes and in turn require stiffer and denser brushes to pick up. Now with the Tom Ford, I have to be very careful when dipping into any pan or I'll, I'll over apply and get to clown face within seconds. But I dipped this brush lightly into the blush. I dipped this brush lightly into the blush twice and it gave a soft finish. So that was good. Um, I, I figured that this, this brush actually would work quite well with that. Br this brush would work very well with that blush. Okay blush and brush, a lot of a lot of that going on here. The Wayne Goss 12 on the other hand, however, I found I had to dip into the product many times um, to get to the pigmentation level that I wanted. So uh, I'm, just, I'm just not a fan of having to dip a bunch of times and then, you know, working it into my skin because I'm always in a rush. So um, let me just show you. So here's the side. Oh crap. Okay, so here is the side view. You see how the Tom Ford is like 
it, I guess it, it flares out a little less. And the Wayne Goss one just seems like it has more airiness to it. And uh, FYI, um, Tom Ford is actually switching over to synthetic brushes. So if you can pick up whichever Tom Ford brush you've had on your wish list for a while now, like seriously, I'm, I'm sad that he's discontinuing his natural hairline and moving over to synthetics. But he has his own reasonings and you know, every, uh, there's a reason for everything. Okay, so let me, I'm gonna move like all of these and then move the other ones over here. And this video is a lot longer than I anticipated. My bad. Okay. So I only have a few brushes left. Hang in there, guys. All right. Um, so this is the Wang Goss 13. It's a dense and flexible pom-pom brush meant for multitasking. I use it for setting powder, but it can also be used for a variety of applications such as blush, contour, and foundation. So I'm gonna see how it works like this. I have mentioned this in my gold powder brush video. I enjoy this brush for setting powder. I'm just trying to focus but not blush or foundation. The hair length is too short for my liking for blush and it doesn't apply foundation well. I haven't tried it for contour since I don't use round brushes for that, but yeah, it may, it may work out. And then I have the Hakuhodo J210 right here. So this is the Hakuhodo equivalent to the Wayne Goss 13. I have, um, I have the same opinion on the J210 as I do the Wayne Goss 13, except the J210 is softer because it's undyed. The Wayne Goss 13 is also a bit larger. It's hard to see in this angle. Oh, the brush, brush handles are too long. Okay. It's a little bit larger in circumference. But yeah, you can see here. All right. So next we have the Wayne Goss 14, which I don't have anymore because I sold it to a friend uh, because I honestly did not like the way I applied blush or highlight whatsoever. The application would always be too imprecise and I understand that it's more of a wispy type of brush, but everyone was swear swearing by it for blush, so I wanted to give it a try. It never applied blush the way I wanted it to, so it had to go. And now here we have the Hakuhodo J or excuse me, G5538. It's this, the G series isn't labeled. So um, I believe in my Japan haul video, I mentioned that I had the G5537, but I think I actually have the G5538. Whichever one is the smaller of the two I have. I bought it in Japan at the Aoyama Boutique in Tokyo and picked it up and placed it on the tray the sales associate was holding. They took all of the stickers off the brush names off of the, like, you know how it's, when you buy new Hakuhodo brushes, they come sealed. So she took off all the stickers. So I couldn't figure out like which brush was which. I had to go based on memory. And I didn't get a receipt with like the brush names on them. So I, I automatically assumed I had the G5537 and I had to double check the measurements and realize I had the G5538 instead. So uh, back to this brush. This brush has longer hairs than the, the Wayne Goss 14, approximately about uh, three to four millimeters longer, but it performs so much better for some reason. Like I, for, to me, normally like the longer the hair is, the less imprecise it is, but um, for, and, and it would actually equal like floppier and lighter application, but the head grabs onto product really well and applies it so nicely. I love using this for highlighter. So, um, uh, yeah, I, I, I highly recommend this one if you, uh, I don't know, for whatever reason, if you don't get the Wayne Goss one. And then we have the Wayne Goss 16, which is this huge brush 
huge eye brush right here. I've spoken about it previously as well. It's my favorite brush from the Wayne Goss line. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm not going to go into detail about it since I've already spoken about it like twice, I think. But I highly recommend this to those of you who want to apply an all over lid shade quickly and seamlessly. It's super soft and plush. Okay, and then two more. Okay, so Wayne Goss 19. Think of this as the dyed goat equivalent to the Wayne Goss 4. Let me pull that out. Yep. Since it's made out of goat hair, it has a denser and fluffier body as goat hair is thicker in nature. I don't really care for it as a blending or crease brush because I think it does a mediocre job. You may love it though. Hakuhoto J142, the queen of my blending brush arsenal. If I, had, if I could have one blending brush for the rest of my life, this would be it. The hairs are, perfect, are the perfect length at 18 mil millimeters. This brush and the Wayne Goss 19 look nearly identical, except the 19 has a taper while the, J, uh, the J142 doesn't. So, I mean, uh, let me see, okay. It's just really hard to show when there's so many brushes in the background and then like, yeah, okay. Um, the flexibility is the same too. Let me just show you. It's hard to show on camera, but yeah looks about the same. So the J142 is so soft and it blends like a dream. I love, 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 love the 142 a lot. Highly recommend it to anyone and everyone and hope this was helpful. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye!